scaredy cats. Welcome to Jump Scare, the weekly show where I bring you, you guys, into the frightening world of horror. I'm your host, Sierra Caballero. And I am here with Jacqueline Davis from the upcoming show of Ohio. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Today we are talking about Japanese horror, specifically Japanese ghosts in horror. Now, if you're not a big horror fan like me, like odds me. are you pro well, like I'm saying that I'm not a big horror fan. You oh. are a big horror fan. Oh, I was confused. But by odds you. are you probably know uh, what Samara slash Sadako in the ring and Kayako in the grudge look like. Mm -hmm. As modern as their uh, image appears in the worldwide horror genre, the basic stories of these spirits are not too new to Japan. For centuries, the long black hair and white clothes have been standard dressed for ghosts, or as they are called in Japanese, yore. This look came about from the white kimono and the loose hair worn by the dead at funerals. So white is a funeral color. Yeah. Or I don't know if it's, it's I don't think it's white, it, it's the funeral color anymore, but like yeah. when this became the standard, it was. It was. You would wear, they, they would wear a white kimono. And then um, part of the reason why like women with their hair long, it's because they would usually have it up when they were alive and then it would be let down, down. when they're Deceased. dead. Pass. Now, the previously mentioned ghost ladies both count as a specific type of spirit, the onryo. The onryo is a spirit that specifically comes back from purgatory to seek revenge for a wrong done to them in life. One of the oldest and most well-known tales featuring the onryo is that of Okiku and the Nine Plates. There are various different versions of her story, but this tragic woman has one thing in common in well, all of the versions. The accusation are breaking or losing one of the wealthy family's tin plates and being thrown into a well. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Gosh, I wonder like where that, that was used. Before. It's Elsewhere? too soon, Jackie. Don't bring that up. <laughs> in most of the stories, she is murdered by the wealthy man who's been trying to get in her pants for ages. In the more romantic version that was that's a little bit of a newer tale, um, he is actually her fiance and commits senpuku afterwards, and it's kind of really sweet it's in not, a it, weird way. You're like, oh, oh. <laughs> but after her death, she then returns to hunt her wannabe lover by counting to nine, then screaming. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah! Really, really, he should have just asked what she wants, what she really, really, really wants. wants. You know? So tell it, okay. And then she tell him Copyright. what she wants, what she really, really Maybe. wants. Yeah, and, and if, if she wants, and if he wants to be her lover, he's got to get with her friends. And if he wants her future, he's got to forget her past. Boom. Now, Kyaku can also be kind of, sort of, be classified as an anobume. She is the ghost of a mother who returns to care for her child. However, unlike Tales of the Abume, she did not die in childbirth. She died very, very brutally. Yeah. That wasn't a very fun time. No, for it wasn't. Her. A common motif in most, if not all, Japanese ghost legends is that of an extreme emotion. The idea is that if someone dies in a state of intense rage or some other emotion, that the ghost cannot help but return to haunt the living, which is why these ghosts are genuinely female, because obviously men don't yeah. have emotions. <laughs> no, no, never, never. And don't point out when they seem to have the emotions, because it'll hurt. That's it for this week's Jump Scare. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite Asian horror film is. And be sure to like and subscribe and also ding that bell on the PN TV channel on YouTube. And a huge special thanks and shout out to our sponsor and friends, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Until next time, stay spooky, my friends.